starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Let's do a, a quick sound check. Steve, can you hear us? Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Steve. And for everyone that's joined us today, um, welcome. My name is Alice Wolf, and you just joined the webinar on keeping badge business in your shop. Um, I am Madeira USA's Manager of Education, and I'm joined here today at our New Hampshire headquarters by Nancy Minnie. Um, Nancy is the Senior Marketing Coordinator and Backing Specialist of Madeira USA. She's also our resident embroiderer. Um, our special guest today joining us remotely from Arizona is Steve Freeman. Steve is the Operating Manager of Q Digitizing, which is an award-winning digitizing company. Uh, Steve has been a, a panelist, a seminar speaker. He writes for trade magazines and is currently on Wearables Magazine's advisory panel. Um, he's been a professional digitizer since 1989 and is trained on Melco, Wilcom, and Pulse software systems. Steve, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. I'm looking forward to our webinar. Great. Um, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping. I'd like to remind everyone to please send in questions. Um, you should have that capability on your screen to type in questions as we go along. I do want to remind everyone, especially if you've never attended one of our webinars before, that we do collect all of the questions. So we try to answer as many as possible in real time, and those that we can't, uh, we'll answer all the questions and make them available through email for everybody. Uh, we will be recording the webinar, so if you'd like to uh, you get interrupted and would like to return to it, that will be possible. Um, you can watch it as you'd like to. Uh, we also will have a printed version of the PowerPoint presentation. We have some handouts for you, which are product descriptions and some digitizing information. Keep an eye on the designs that you see as we go through our webinar. Um, each of them is available to you. Most have been digitized by Steve. Um, they all have been digitized uh, with the, the products in mind that we're talking about today. Um, also, there'll be a link to Q Digitizing at Steve's website in case you'd like to learn more about him. Uh, before we just review quickly what uh, we will be learning today, um, I just wanted to start out by saying that we're going to be talking about two products. Um, each of them is capable of keeping badge business in your shop. If you struggle with the decision of whether or not to send it out, to contract out, and you don't have a large, large volume of badges to make, we're going to be talking today about Madeira's multifunctional frame system, or MFS, and also the Easy Badge Film. Both products, um, the procedure of using both is very similar. Uh, the capabilities of them differs a little bit. So let's take a look at what we're going to be learning today. Um, we're going to, by uh, using these two different products, we're going to discuss how it's possible to create standalone badges with minimal effort. Um, we're going to talk, Steve is going to be reviewing the correct way to digitize for best results. If you don't do your own digitizing, that's fine, but it's important um, to know what you have to mention to your digitizer so that um, your badges can be digitized correctly. Um, you'll learn an alternative to heat seal for fixing a finished badge to a garment. Uh, Nancy will talk about a streamlined method for mass producing name badges, if that's something that you do at your shop. And Steve and Nancy will both be talking about uh, a way to attach high stitch count designs to performance wear, which is, I know, a big challenge, and we've got a way of solving that problem as well. So I'm going to back out, and Nancy, if you could start off by talking about the mechanics of the MFS and how easy it is to assemble. Thank you, Alice. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm glad you could take the time out of your day and join us today. I feel that you're going to um, hopefully be happy with what we have to share with you. And we are going to start out with the multifunctional frame system. From here on out, we're going to shorten that to MFS to, um, so we don't tie our tongues up throughout the whole um, webinar here. So the multifunctional frame system is consists of these parts that you actually see on the screen here. So there's a typical tubular frame that is square. And you have the two inlay pieces on the upper left hand 
Um, we're going to show you how this all goes together shortly, um, but when you do purchase this particular product, you do get some frames. Um, and the, these are paper frames with plastic on the inside, and this is what we're going to embroider on. Um, and these fit nice and precisely together. And so on the next slide, we are going to see um, just a short little video. And this shows how it's actually put together. So you simply inlay that first metal inlay, and it just sits on top of the gray frame. You put the paper frame inside. There's little nub set stick it up to capture those holes that are in it. And then you put the um, top metal inlay on top of it. And that kind of sandwiches it together. Notice there's little clamps on the side um, coming up right here where the fingers, you pull them in, those little levers go right underneath the ridge of the hoop. And this is how you put it together. So you can see you're going to get it and it's very easily assembled. And it's once you have that paper frame and sandwich in there, it's ready to go to your machine. I'm going to interrupt us for one second to answer a, a quick question that came in. Um, we're going to be using the words badges, patches, and emblems to mean pretty much the same thing. Um, yes, the question was, are, by badges, are we talking about patches? The answer is yes. Uh, we did do an in-depth research to find out the difference, and it's kind of minuscule. So yes, badges, patches, and emblems, kind of all the same thing as what we're talking about. Thank you for the question. Um, keep them coming as we go along. We'll try to capture them and um, answer them if they're pertinent to what we're talking about. Otherwise, like Alice said, we'll follow up at the end. Um, the other product that we are going to be discuss, excuse me, discussing is the Easy Badge Film. Uh, the Easy Badge Film is very similar. It is a plastic um, material, and you embroider directly on this, just like you would do with the other plastic material. It is 100 microns thick. It's heat sensitive in that that's how you can remove it. it most of it is perforated away, just like the other material. Um, but if there's small holes that you're embroidering on, or maybe there's a little residual as you tore it away, um, you can apply a little heat to it and actually kind of melts it away. This is going to hoop in your, most of your frames. It is available in 19 inches wide and 109 yards long. Um, so essentially anything that you can hoop that's smaller than 19 inches, um, and that design that fits in that hoop itself, that's how big you can make the design. And um, there's actually a, a quite a large design coming up that you're going to see um, shortly in that you're going to see how big that design can actually be. Um, so here we have the same badge film um, hooped in a smaller hoop. And this one is a standalone badge. We um, took what we had going on here, had Steve digitize this particular particular design. Um, we did it in the shape of a stop sign. And any, it could be any shape it want, you want it to be. It could be round. It could be square. It could have little things sticking out of it. It's not going to um, It's gonna work really well as long as the digitizing has um, been done, done correctly. Um, we're going to have more detailed digitizing instructions coming up. Um, to help you out. And Steve, at this point, I want to turn it over to you to talk about that superhero design. Okay, guys. Um, so uh, Madeira presented us with a design to be done on the Easy Badge film, and they, they wanted us to do a larger design so you could see the potential for what this product can do. This design was about you know, a little bit taller than eight inches tall by a, a little sh little smaller than six inches wide, and it fit easily in this hoop. This, and as you can see, it has a very complex edge to it, so we're not at all limited by the shape of the patch. And in the wonderful world of uh, badges or patches, um, one of the terms that we use is, is a hole, and in this case, it's intentional, and it's a good thing. But if you notice on the, the, the right arm of Superman there, there's a hole between his arm and the side of his body. That material may, may need to be removed with a touch of heat at the end of the process. But you can also get in there with a pair of tweezers and, and pluck it out if it stays in after the fact. There, there's many different ways to get to the finish line with this product. And we're going to go over more of those as we go through the seminar. This patch can also have um, a heat seal product applied to the back of it. 
so you can heat seal it to just about anything you want. So if you wanted to put this on the back of a product like a denim jacket or a leather jacket, you do all the embroidery on the product, then you apply the patch to the denim jacket, and it will look like you embroidered it directly to the jacket. Now, the advantage to doing it this way is this. A denim jacket seems like it's a very stable substrate, but any of you guys who are out there who've done a lot of embroidery on denim will know that if you put this many stitches into denim, that it can really make the, the jacket start to be kind of wavy, and it'll look like you, like you have a potato chip, a big blue potato chip, as opposed to a nice flat jacket. The other beauty of this, too, and this... It doesn't matter if you're applying this to a denim jacket or a leather jacket or a fine piece of apparel that has a, a beautiful lining in it. You won't see the, the back side of the embroidery because you don't have to embroider through the garment. You're just creating this product and then it's applied you know, directly to the jacket as opposed to sewing through it. That in and of itself can be huge, especially if you're working with high-end products and you don't want to run the risk of you know, damaging a leather jacket that might cost several hundred dollars um, just to put a, a 10 or $15 patch on it. This can really go a long way to helping your bottom line. Hey, Steve, yeah. um, somebody actually wrote in asking if the black colored area was actually material. And it, I just wanted to let them know that it's not. All the stitching that you see here is done in a black thread and a very dark blue thread. Um, and it, those colors were chosen to kind of go along with the denim jacket as well. Um, but this is, these are all stitches that you're seeing here. Um, um, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, to, to further answer the question, um, we don't want to get too deep into the weeds on the technical aspects, but this could be done as an applique where that could be fabric but that's not what this presentation is meant for today. We're going to teach you guys how to essentially create your own fabric. Right. Um, so here we just have a couple of designs that could either, um, they're both standalone badges, um, simply simple designs that were presented to Steve and his crew to create some more kind of care, uh, Badges with a little more character. Um, and in character, we got some kind of pointy ears on the cat one, straight ears on the chimney for the dog one. Um, but they do have a lot of points and a lot of different shapes here. Um, and not only that, it's kind of like a hand-drawn look to it. So these were kind of simple designs that could have been or can be stitched out on both the multifunctional frame or the MFS um, or the Easy Badge film. Um, there was a question a little bit ago, and I wanted to clarify for the MFS. Those are machine specific, so we have um, the arms for those gray hoops are interchangeable. So whichever machine you have, we're going to make sure that you have the correct arms so that it fits on um, your commercial machine and even some of the home machines, we can get the arms for those as well. Just wanted to read a couple questions there. Going back to the jacket back, um, that's actually heat sealed. Um, we're going to get a little um, in detail about the heat seals coming up as well, so we'll explain you that process. Um, and these are just a couple more designs. These ones were um, digitized by Rich Medcraft, and he um, presented us with some more um, temporary-looking um, round or oval designs, whereas he created the fabric, that white fabric out of stitches, um, and the outer edges with the satin stitches, um, but he put some really kind of fine detail into these designs. Um, so you can go anywhere from basic um, to more in-depth when it comes to details or shapes. And both films um, operate fairly similar in how they pop out. So it's that satin stitch that creates a nice um, edge for the design to perforate out. Um, as you can see here, it's being taken out quite easily. And it's actually, it's pretty um, supple in, in its feel. So it's not a real stiff one. So if you wanted to add something to the back of the design, whether it's a, um, a 
film laminate that would give it a little more stiffness, you can do that. Or if you want to keep it nice and soft and supple like this, um, <coughs> simply tearing it out of the um, plastic. And there you have your standalone badge. Keep in mind as we go through this webinar, uh, Nancy and Steve are talking about basically two products. Um, this film that you see in the easy frame that's part of the MFS uh, system is one of them. The other is that the film is available in rolls. Um, the rolls are, what, 19 inches wide by 190 inches long. Um, again, the procedure, the digitizing, the ease of popping the design out are similar. But because people have different setups in their shops, um, we are talking about the MFS, which is a machine sensitive, uh, based on whatever model you've got, um, apparatus that you can buy for your machine, or the film that Nancy's talking about is something that can be purchased and simply hooped in, in most hoops that you might already have. Right, and they each have their own benefits um, and maybe disadvantages as well. So we're, we're hoping to show you them both because they both show you the same or produce um, similar products in the end. Um, but you're going to choose based on what we provide here, uh, which one's going to work best for you. Or maybe you can see a reason why to buy both. Nancy, can you mention how the, the edge, the satin stitch edge around the car compares to a marrowed edge? Um, well, this is actually done with your 40 weight thread, so a marrow thread is typically um, more like a 12 weight, so it's a much thicker thread, and there's a machine where you would just manually, you know, you would have this badge on twill, um, and then you would manually finish that edge um, with a marrow machine. So it, it acts as the same thing, it's a nice finished edge to the patch, um, and it's done at the machine, so there's no separate machine needed. Um, whether you're using a home machine with a zigzag um, stitch or you have an actual marrow machine, this actually does it perfectly. And it has some other benefits that you're going to see um, a few slides later. And I think as we go on to the next slide, Steve, you're going to fill us in on the digitizing process. Okay, guys. So what's kind of important to remember is whether you digitize this yourself <clears throat> or you send it to somebody like me or you send it to me, the, the process for using the film or the framed product is essentially exactly the same, okay? Um, the very, the very, and what you want to remember here is this process is actually creating fabric. You are turning yourself into a, a makeshift fabric maker, okay? And to do that, the very first thing that you want to do is run a set of stitches that's going to outline the area that is going to become the patch. So you basically just, if it's that Superman shape, you're going to run a, a stitch that defines the outline of Superman. And if it's an oval, then you just do the oval. If it's a square, etc. Then what comes next is actually very, very important, okay? You need to run three layers of under, underlay, not underwear, excuse me, <laughs> three layers of underlay that ought, offset each other at opposing 45 degree angles. And you're going to do this, I don't want to give specific densities, but you can tell by looking at the picture that it's about the density of what you might see in like a screen door on your underlays, okay? And you do this three different times and you entirely fill the outline that you defined a moment ago. Okay, then once you have your underlay set up, you're going to put a full fill density fill on top of those underlays. That process is what creates the fabric. And then the design is essentially digitized on top of the fabric that you just created. And once the fabric is created, the digitizing techniques that you use to digitize on top of the fabric are identical to what you would do for any other digitizing process that you might do. There are some minor tweaks and things that you might have to do, adjusting some densities and some pull compensations, but you really need to, as with any digitizing project, you have to use your creative control while you're doing the process. And then furthermore, the, the last step, and this is equal, this is critical, guys, um, when you put a satin stitch border around the outside, 
that is going to what that is going to be what ultimately perforates the design out of the material. So you need to use a density that's heavy enough to, to function as a perforation. Now what's important to understand here is the entire process is actually in a way perforating this material, but is doing it in a manner that maintains the integrity of the fabric. So what you need to avoid doing is putting too many stitches in one spot and prematurely punching out, punching out the design. It's impossible for me to tell you what the exact number is, but you'll know it when you see it. You just you don't want to create holes before you want holes to be there. If you just maintain densities that are typical to any other digitizing project, you'll be okay. The exception to that is the outside border needs a little bit more density than what you might be used to. Look, also that super critical is if you are going to give this to somebody that you use as an outsourced digitizer, then make sure that they're aware of the process that they're digitizing for. Because there are some things that are done that a digitizer would never do usually. For example, in the car logo that we looked at a couple minutes ago, if I were to digitize that design, I would typically leave a hole behind the whole car and then I would use the car to fill the hole, okay? When I'm doing the MFS project, I would create that fabric in the entire oval fill, okay? And then stitch the car on top of the, on top of the oval, that, oval fabric that I just made. It's going to be important to do that so that when you pull the patch out of the material that the patch maintains its structural integrity and it lays flat for you. If you start putting together puzzle pieces by leaving holes behind fill areas, then you have the potential of having a wavy patch. You, you really want to avoid doing that. Also, Madeira has an excellent PDF file that explains the digitizing process. And I'll be perfectly honest with you guys, when I first started doing that, um, that PDF file was the Bible that I used to teach myself how to do this process. And we haven't had any problem programming any of these designs using the materials that they made available to us. Thank you, Steve. I was gonna mention that as well, because it is important um, to know that while this is not a webinar teaching you, of, teaching you about the digitizing, we have the basics here. Um, so that is actually one of the handouts. So you want to make sure that you grab a hold of that and download it um, so that you have that. Because um, it really does give you a little more detailed parameters of where to put your outline stitches and the satin stitch as well. Uh, Nancy and, or Steve, whichever one of you can answer this question, um, is the three-layer underlay different than if you were creating lights? No? That if you were creating what? I'm sorry? If you were creating standalone lace, a person is asking if the three-layer underlay that you're creating for the MFS is different than lace. Well, I've only person, personally digitized for lace a few times in my career. It's not the, it's just not the field that, that I've been professionally involved in. But the times that I have um, digitized for lace was actually for Victoria's Secret. And we, we did not use an underlay in this fashion because the areas <clears throat> that were between the, the, the stitched areas could not have any underlay as part of the design. It needed it needed to be completely free of stitching. And we in in that instance we actually used a water soluble product instead of a, a heat sensitive product. And these were products that were going to be worn right up against a, a female's skin and they wanted it they just wanted as few stitches as possible um, to the point where it was very lacy. <laughs> right. in, 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 my, in my experience, when I was to shout these standalone lays, they typically have the two underlays, so the crisscross or you know the double lattice underlay, and that just gives it kind of an open area where you can do um, you know the design. So I think it's not quite the same um, in the underlay in that it has that third layer. So you know a double lattice would be considered two layer two layers of underlay. 
Um, but then you have that third layer that's very similar, just at a slightly different angle, so you're not going over the same area, um, and it just gives a little more foundation underneath. Um, somebody had a question about the temperature that's needed to remove the Easy Badge film. Um, in your um, in your navigation, while you're watching the navi uh, watching the webinar, there's a, a handout there that's called Easy Badge Film, and that has the um, information that you'll need for removing it um, when it comes to the heat. So all the information is on that one. So I encourage you to download that. Um, one question that just came in, uh, Steve, you kind of addressed this. Um, are there any issues with too many stitches in the plastic? I think that that is something that, uh, like you said, you can't really give a, an exact number, um, but the, the stitching that goes around and creates the border for the emblem is actually meant to perforate, and um, so it shouldn't be considered too many stitches if you find that at the end because that's what its purpose is. And then the point, um, uh, Steve, that you made at the end, the question was, should I tell my digitizer that I'll be using the MFS? Um, yes, I, I think Steve, as a digitizer, wanted to make certain that um, we weren't starting from, from square one with digitizing. For those of you who are attending that do your own digitizing, it's important um, that you know the steps that Steve went over. If you don't do your own digitizing, no problem. You can still use these products, but you do need to let your digitizer know um, that that outline stitch needs to be um, set up as the thing that stitches last. Well, one thing that I wanted to interject here is a, a term that you might hear throughout your embroidery careers, when designs are packed with too many stitches, it gives the impression that us digitizers and embroiderers like to say, makes a design bulletproof, okay? There is no reason why doing the MFS product requires a bulletproof logo, okay? Um, you do not need to make a design overly dense to make this process work, it, that's not, that's not what perforates the product. What perforates the product is doing the job correctly. Uh, making it over dense will cause problems other than, other than that. So it, it's, it's, it is kind of dialing into what's right for your situation. But those three layers of underlay are critical to setting the foundation. By doing that, then you can use a top density that's appropriate for supple embroidery. If you didn't do those three layers of underlay, um, then you probably would need to do an overly dense top stitch, and that's what would make the design feel bulletproof. But that underlay allows the design to remain su supple, and it will lay down very nicely for you. Thank you, Steve. Um, so a lot of questions have been coming in with the heat seal and, and the process and which fabrics you can use it on. Um, so we are going to go through the couple of slides here and kind of give you the steps um, that are used when you use a heat seal. So very often when you purchase a patch, it has it already has a heat seal on the back of it. Um, so and then you would use that. You maybe you'd iron it on, or you'd use a heat press to put it on a garment, a bag, or whatnot. Um, so we wanted to let you know that there are heat seals out there, and that both neither the MFS or the Easy Badge films, they are not heat seals. These are plastics that are uh, materials that are meant to embroider on. While the plastic in the MFS is not heat dissolvable, um, the fabric or the plastic that's in the Easy Badge film is. And that just means for the removal part of it. Um, so here we're talking about heat seals, and heat seals are, are usually double-sided. They come with a piece of um, protective paper on one side, and there's a reason for that, in that you know, you're going to start with your heat seal, the badge, and a garment. Um, you're going to take on the paper side, or just take a piece of that heat seal, and on the paper side, you're going to turn your badge upside down, and you're going to trace it. So now you have an outline of the design itself. And in the step number three, you see where that house has been cut out. So now that house that has been cut out actually is the same exact size as your, your badge. Um, we've done it upside down, so then when we go to step four and put it on to the, the back of the patch, um, you still see the paper there. So now you're still seeing white, 
that's actually the paper, and you need that paper there because you're going to either iron it on with an iron or you're going to put it on with a heat press, and that's going to protect your, your iron or heat press from sticking to it. So this is just a piece of paper or it's um, a protective piece of paper. Um, so now, if you go to the, we go to the next slide here on the left side, number five, we've applied the iron, and in the next step, we've allowed it to cool because the heat seal sticks to the paper just a little bit. As soon as it cools, you can peel the paper off. You can see how easily it's come off. So now on the back side of that house is that double-sided adhesive. So we've adhered it to the patch. And like I said, if you purchase patches, um, maybe if it's at a store or you're ordering a bunch for, um, for your business, it's going to come with this stuff on it most likely. Um, but here, we're going to produce it ourselves. So you simply take that white paper off, put the patch where you want it on your garment. And I do like to recommend that you use a press cloth um, in between the embroidery and your heat press or iron just to protect it. Make sure you don't burn the threads. Um, but you apply enough heat, that's going to melt it right onto your garment. And here we just simply put it on a black jacket um, as an example. Um, so that explains the process of using heat seals. Um, so a heat seal, heat seals typically typically come in a couple different uh, materials, and they're meant um, to be set at different um, settings uh, for temperatures. So as long as the end garment can withstand the temperature that you're um, applying to it, you are most likely going to be able to adhere this any of these patches to those garments. I'm just going to interrupt for one second. A um, couple questions coming in asking us to repeat the, the underlay, different things that we've already gone through. We're about halfway through the webinar, and I just want to remind people that the webinar is being recorded, um, that we will have this available to you to watch on demand. We have also will have printable uh, versions of these slides. And we have handouts that uh, we mentioned at the beginning that include product descriptions, how to do um, the heat seal, different um, heat seal products. I know there's a couple questions on temperatures. So um, we will be sending, referring to these at the end and also sending you links to all this information. So don't worry. Thank you, Alice. Um, so here we're showing the MFS. Notice in the upper image there we have three um, name tags that were embroidered on this. So this is the MFS. This is the gray hoop with the two metal inserts in that paper frame. Um, kind of limited by about a four inch by four inch. Um, however, it's not limited on um, how many you can put in there. Um, so you could do a large design, you know, that's for a big patch, I should say, that's like four inches around. Or you could do three or maybe even four of uh, these name tags, Stephanie. Um, and then that was simply, those were simply popped out and applied with a heat seal onto the performance which is shared below. Um, and, and it's only limited by your imagination here. I mean, if these are small designs, you could probably fit up to 12 of them on that one square. Um, and you could also attach it with the satin outline stitch. And that was one of the questions that was asked earlier. And the next slides that we go through are going to um, do ex exactly that. So we're going to show you here um, how to attach a high stitch count design onto that thin slippery performance wear that we all are working with um, on a regular basis here. Um, for the example here, we're actually using a t-shirt, a lightweight t-shirt. Um, so we're putting about 20,000 stitches on a design, but not on the fabric. Um, so we're just going to use that outer line, outer satin stitch. And it's important to realize here, um, before we go through these, that this can only be done with the MFS. Um, the MFS allows us to align it perfectly to be able to put that satin stitch on later. Um, so this is one of the great benefits of this guy. Um, so, of course, you've got to get your products together. Um, so we have our T-shirt and we have our multifunctional frame. Notice that I have that outer, the outer hoop kind of set aside because I'm not going to use that until later on in this project. Um, we are going to start um, by, uh, we're going to use the stop sign 
here. And what you're going to do is you're only going to embroider those three underlays. You're going to do, you're going to create your fabric with all that red thread there. And we went ahead and stitched out the letters on this, but notice that there is no final outline stitch. And we stopped it purposely. Um, we set a stop within the design so that it would stop and we wouldn't miss it. And I take it out of the machine. Um, and you're going to take all these pieces off of the gray hoop. You're going to set them aside because we don't need them until we've hooped the shirt. And here we've hooped the shirt. You're going to use your, your, the same stabilizer that you would use on your own. Um, because this is a lightweight t-shirt, I used a Weblon no-show. You're going to see that in a little bit on the back side once we finish this. Um, but I just hooped, I marked a little center there. You can see a little spot in the center because that's where I wanted to, um, the design to stitch so I knew how to, where to hoop it. Um, and then from there, you take those metal inlay pieces and you're going to put the bottom one in. You're going to put that partially stitched out design in. And then you're going to put the metal inlay on top. Um, here, we've put it back into the machine, so I'm ready to do my outline stitch. But I wanted to give Steve a little bit of time maybe to kind of kick in here. I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add, Steve, to the uh, kind of what I got started. Well, <clears throat> you know, one of the beautiful things about this product is out in the marketplace these days, you know, one of the most um, prevalent products that you'll find are these performance knit products that stretch in all directions. And basically, it's like trying to embroider on a rubber band. And any of you guys out there who have worked with this product know just how difficult that can be. So this, this product will allow you to put a high stitch count design on a performance knit product and still have you know, a gorgeous product at the end of the day that is not going to be all wavy. It's not going to, you know, we call it potato chipping where I come from. You know, it's not going to look like there's a potato chip sewn into your, your shirt. And the reason for that is you're doing the stitching on the materials and then you're applying a finished product back to the pro back to the, back to the product. If you were to try to embroider this stop sign design on something like an Under Armour t-shirt, um, you will fail, okay? Um, some people might try and tell you that you won't, but that product is not designed to receive a high stitch count design like this. But <clears throat> limited only by your creativity, you can use this product and apply a high stitch count design to a performance knit product and it will lay flat and it, and it will look gorgeous. And there, And again, you are limited only by your imagination with this product. There is more than one way to the finish line for attaching the finished design to the product. You can use the MFS frame, or you can even, um, you know, by, by programming a satin stitch to go all the way around, or you could even do a walk stitch going around the inside of the border. The, the, the point is, is again, and being a little bit redundant, you are limited only by your creativity and, and how you want to use the product. I, uh, when this was first presented to me, I was I was a little bit leery. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. But a after we worked with it, we were actually quite amazed at what we could do. Right, and then on the other side of it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a performance wear or a lightweight t-shirt, but it might be an expensive garment. Um, and that you don't want to put 20,000 stitches on this expensive garment only to, you know, have an issue at the end of uh, when the design's just about finished and you've ruined that expensive garment. So this is another way of adding, you can add this to a heavyweight garment, but maybe, you know, it's a $200 jacket and you're just nervous about putting this many stitches on it. You could do the same thing with, um, with that material as well. I could not possibly agree more. I, I would not want to directly embroider this design to, let's say, you know, something like a letterman's jacket, you know, where some kid comes in and he has a jacket that's his most favorite thing in the whole wide world. You know, you can use this process to 
make him make it look like you've embroidered directly to his jacket, but you in fact have not, and it's still going to look the same, but you don't have to run the risk of, of ruining that kid's coat, and at the end of the day, you're going to have a more attractive product anyway. Right, and this is actually, I, I've actually used this process here to cover mistakes. So, you know, this stop sign is probably about three, three inches long. And say you had a shirt or jacket or whatever, and it has a logo on it. You know, here we've had people try to take out the stitches of a certain thing, only to find out, ooh, I kind of ruined it. It doesn't look very good anymore. You can actually cover a mistake with this um, as well. I hadn't thought of that, but that's actually brilliant. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And I've had to do that in the past using a stitch eraser to try and shave stitches out of a product and then re embroider it. And that's no fun. No, <laughs> this would <it's> work. <laughs> this would work. Right, it definitely would. A um, couple questions have come through. Why couldn't you use Badge Master for this? Um, the reason why is because you wouldn't be able to take it off and put it back in the hoop in the same exact spot. Um, so you'd never be able to align it. Those metal inlays and the paper frame with the holes on the edge, put it in the exact same spot. So now that we have put this back in the machine and we're ready to stitch it out, um, you, you're gonna let the machine do the outer satin stitch. On the next slide, we're gonna see it all finish and how when you unhoop it, you're simply just gonna tear away that plastic. Um, I don't wanna go quite to the finish just yet because I wanted to um, just throw another couple of questions in here. Um, so hopefully that answers your, in the, not only can you not achieve this with Badge Master, you won't be able to achieve this with the easy um, badge film that we have because that one's hooped um, in the same way that Badge Master would be hooped. So you're, um, the main difference between Badge Master and the easy badge film is one's water soluble while the other one is heat soluble. Another um, purpose for this was actually came in as a question. A woman uh, wrote in asking if um, it could be used on a crocheted quilt that a customer has um, given her to put letters on. And uh, Nancy and Steve mentioned uh, the performance wear fabric and expensive garments. Also, well, I guess Steve alluded to it with the letterman's jacket, very... Um, kind of near and dear to customers' hearts, very personal products that are um, that you might be hesitant to, to embroider on, this would cut down on the stitches that are actually being applied to that. One of the things that, that's always amazed me is how inventive the embroiderers are that are out in the field. So I, I just want to reiterate, um, the product itself allows you to create a standalone product. How you then apply that product to another product is entirely up to your own creativity. So don't feel like you're limited by using the MFS frame. Um, the MFS frame will make your life easier, but that doesn't mean that it's the only way to the finish line. You can use the film, and then you can use other techniques that you use to apply the, the products to pretty much anything that you might want to apply it to. You are only limited by your creativity. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I'm definitely fun um, when I, as I'm educating um, throughout videos and webinars, I always encourage people to test. You know, you've always got um, garments that you've had issues with and you weren't able to send them out. Don't throw those away. Those are always test garments um, for when the next project comes in the door. So, you know, Finding the easiest and straightest way to the finish line is always a challenge, and um, testing is definitely the best way to get there. Uh, I, I couldn't possibly agree more. You know, there, there's one one difference between the, the hobby embroiderist and the commercial embroiderist is, you know, the commercial guys, sometimes we're always looking for the fastest, most super efficient way, you know, to get it across the finish line. We're we're the hare and the tortoise and the hare story, you know. But the people who are the home embroiderers, the people who are doing it for a hobby, the people who are just creating some of the most beautiful pieces in the world are not necessarily restrained by time. So if you have time and you have that creative flair, then this is a fantastic tool for you. There's, there's no question about it. 
definitely. Um, so here we have the final project, um, product. And um, so the stitches within the design in total are over 20,000 stitches. And that's a pretty big design, um, pretty, uh, quite a lot of stitches within about a three and a half inch by three and a half inch design. But by going through the process, and hopefully we didn't lose you here, um, and just using that satin stitch to attach it to the t-shirt, there were less than 3,000 stitches in that outer um, satin stitch. So not only did that finish tying the design all together, it attached it to the shirt in one full swoop. Um, so this can only be accomplished with that with the MFS. If you're rehooping, um, if you've ever tried to rehoop and stitch over um, a design that kind of came unhooped, um, the chances of lining it up, lining it up nice and straight, are pretty much slim to null. Um, so. The um, so like I said, even if you are trying to cover over something, that uh, the backing, that Weblon no show that you're seeing on the back can stay there. Um, if it's a black on black, um, you're you're going to hide whatever was underneath there a hundred percent. I just want to before we go on to the thread, I just want to. Um, actually submit two questions that came in and it's actually going back to the heat seal. Um, question came in um, either Steve or Nancy, can the, the heat seal be attached to the patch and then um, later applied by the end customer so that you're selling the final patch but you're not actually attaching it to the garment? Absolutely, yep. Um, you could either take that release paper off or you can keep it on there. Um, just give your end customers the instructions and maybe um, hand them out one of the tutorials that comes with that product um, for the heat seal itself so that they know what temperature to use. But absolutely, they can have them on. That, that's the way I would have answered that. <laughs> yeah. um, and there's a couple, like I said, we, uh, Madeira does carry a couple different um, heat seals. One's the 4220 item and the other one's 5256. Um, the basic difference between those two is the material that it will adhere to. Um, so as you're looking at those online or talking to our wonderful customer sales and service department, just ask them for the differences between those. And um, it's essentially, it's the material that it's going to be adhered to. I'd like to add just one thing to that. And um, on the 4220 product, um, if you're trying to apply that patch, to a product that is water resistant, then that patch isn't going to ap apply well because it, um, the water resist it's a water it's it's a water based glue. So if you try and put it on a water resistant product, the product is actually going to do its job and kind of repel the patch. So it's absolutely critical, you know, that you do make sure that you're using the right product because the there is there is more than one option in this world for that. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, another question, is there an issue talking about the, the design of the stop sign, um, would there be an issue with the middle of the stop sign if it's not attached and it's only attached around the outside, um, would it create any bowing away from the garment? Um, nope, that typically, you know, in all the examples that I have produced, um, no, that's not going to, um, it's not going to pop. And another question, um, if, if the film will shrink when it's exposed to heat, um, will it not shrink if it is tumble dried after it's been washed? No, you're, you're going to keep, you know, a, a medium to low dryer if it's going in the dryer and it's going to, it's going to maintain its shape fine. The, what's really important to remember there is the, the material itself becomes fundamentally not terribly important once the once you've made the fabric. If the fabric is the fabric is the fabric once you're done, and if it's digitized properly, um, that's just simply not going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a look at the the threads that can be used on these two products. Um, so the simple answer is, are you going to be limited by the amount or the type of thread you use in 
the answer is no. Um, you can use any embro machine embroidery thread that is out there, um, whether it's your thicker 12 weight threads, your thinnest 60 weight thread, they all have their benefits um, in and of themselves with a classic rayon, polyneon 40 being your standard weight, um, where you can create most of your um, designs with those. Um, it's important to throw your um, different specialty threads are, that are out there, whether it's a metallic thread. Um, a little bit goes a long way when it comes to the metallic thread. With your thinner 60 weight threads, you're going to be able to create small letters, you know, nice, clear, small letters. Um, maybe you have some fine detail that you're trying to get into a design. Um, or maybe you want a matte finish when it comes to the 40 weight threads. So your digitizing is going to be the same. Um, Steve mentioned that during the digitizing process earlier and that um, you're going to follow the same parameters when it comes to creating the design. The only thing that I would like to add to that, this part of the discussion is you don't want to use the 60 weight threads to do the base material. Um, if you do that, then you are going to need to add extra density that's not required for the process. Use the 60 weight threads for, for detail, small lettering, those kind of things. But for the base fabric, use your 40 weight threads. Absolutely. And either one, classic brand or polyneon 40, um, whatever you typically use in your 40 weight, use that here. Nancy, thank you. Um, when we first took possession of our um, MFS product, we sent it out to several um, embroiderers and asked them to kind of play with it and let us know what they thought of the results that it produced. And these were some of the um, quotes that we got back. And I will leave them up there for people to read them if you'd like to see them. Um, at this point, we've covered a lot of the questions that came in. Some were very specific to projects, and those, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to hold and um, put together answers to all the questions and send send that um, send you all a link to those so that you can see everybody who has taken the time to send in a question will see an answer to it. Um, either Nancy or Steve will be answering those. Um, Again, the links that we'll send you are for our recorded webinar so that you can hear uh, Nancy and Steve describe these two products. Um, the printable version, if you'd uh, like, if you'd prefer to have the pictures next to you while you're trying them out, um, there'll be a link to uh, specials that both uh, Steve and Madeira USA are offering. And Let's see, the handouts uh, that Nancy mentioned, we have um, a handout on how to digitize for the MFS, setting up the MFS on your machine. Um, we have a, a product sheet for the Easy Badge film, um, and also how to do, um, how to do the attaching your badge to, the, to your garments. Um, so we have a lot to share with you, and you'll be getting that in your, in your emails. Um, also unique to this email is that any of the designs that you've seen today, um, again, were digitized mostly by Steve. They were all digitized with uh, the MFS or the Easy Batch film in mind. Uh, so if you you have access to all of them, if you'd like to try any to see um, how they work for you. Uh, we'd like to encourage you to take advantage of the specials that uh, both Madeira USA and Steve has put together. Um, and we'd like to thank uh, especially Steve for joining us today. Um, and Steve, you, you put a lot of, shed a lot of light on the product, and we definitely thank you for that. Uh, no problem, and thank, thanks again for you guys having me here. For all you guys out there, the biggest takeaway from this is whether you digitize it yourself or you send it to uh, a digitizer like me, um, just make sure that you are using the MFS specific um, techniques in your project. And if you do that, you're going to do just fine. Um, obviously, we're hoping that you'll give us a try. And if you do, we're going to be sending you all an email. I promise you that we're not going to flood you with a bunch of spam. But you will get at least one message from us. And if you'd like to take advantage of this special, just reply to that email and with MFS in the subject line. And I'll make sure that you get 20% off your order. 
and that doesn't matter to me if it's a left chest design or a hat design, and you can even do it for a product that's not MFS related. Um, just let me know that you heard about us through through this webinar, and we'll get you taken care of. Um, thank you, Steve. I'd like to thank everybody for spending your afternoon with us, and we hope that you've learned something about keeping badges and patches and emblems in your shop. Um, if you have any questions on any of this follow-up, please contact your USA. Look for an email with all of the links that we promised. And again, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, everybody.